Hi guys, welcome to the Word of Faith today. Um, I hope this finds you well. Uh, today I'll be reading from Psalms 104. And um, my main, uh, my highlight, highlighting verse is uh, verse 24. But I'll also read through other verses uh, in the psalm just to give us a context of today's topic. Um, and today I'm talking about divine providence. Divine providence. Um, Psalms 104, verse, I'll, I'll read verse 1. It says, O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. Uh, verse 5 says, He set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. And then I'll jump to verse 13. He says, He waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The earth is satisf satisfied by the fruit of his work. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for man to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth. Wine that gladdens the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread to sustain his heart. Uh, the trees of the Lord are well watered, and the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There the birds make their nests, and the stalk, which is a bird, has its home in the pine trees. Uh, from verse 19 to 23, it just speaks of how the moon marks of the various seasons of the world, how we have winter, we have autumn, we have summer, um, and how the sun knows when to go down and when to come up, uh, that God brings darkness and it becomes night, and all the beasts of the forest wake up and they go to look for their prey. And verse 21 says that as they look for their prey, God is the one who gives them the food that they get. And then it says the sun rises in the morning and then the animals go to sleep. And then man goes out to his work all the way to labor into the evening. Verse 24 uh, is just a praise uh, verse that says, is how many works, O Lord? How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you made them all. It, the earth is full of your creatures. If you go on and read um, the subsequent verses um, uh, from verse 25 all the way to verse 35, you'll see the psalmist here just explaining, you know, how the world works, explaining just how God uh, works from the throne, from heaven, just to allow everything to go on. And um, God's providence is seen here in this psalm, and we also see it in a couple of other scriptures in the Bible. Uh, we have Isaiah chapter 40, you'll see uh, some glimpse of it. Uh, from Job 38 to 41, you'll see God challenging uh, Job, asking him, when do unafanyanga kukaevi? Are you the one who raised the mountains? Are you the, ones who, are you the one who makes the cow produce milk? And you know, at the end, Job is like, okay, mean me? I mean, I'm just, a, I'm just a human, I'm just a normal guy, and there's nothing I can do. So when I talk about God's providence, what I'm talking about is the protective care of God and of nature as a spiritual power. So it's not only just God providing, um, and this is, there's a difference between his providence and his provision. So providence is... God uh, sustaining all life on earth and off earth. We don't know if there's life off, off of earth, but that the fact that God allows, you know, how the ecosystem works, the fact that uh, we'll wake up in the morning and then it will have rained in the evening and then the sun will come up and then the, the carrots that you will have planted uh, will be in the soil and then the soil have minerals. All that is God's providence. Uh, but provision, provision is, 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 is like a one-off thing. And provision is, um, you, you find provision under providence. And so provision is like, I give you something. It's like I donate to you something. It's like a supply. But you see, providence, is, is a, is, it speaks of a causal, causal event that just bring together um, sustenance of life. And our God is the divine providence. And that's something that I want to highlight today, that you hear people talking about Mother, mother Nature, oh, Sijui, the universe speaks, and then, um, you know, this is how the world is. There are even books written about it, but uh, I just want to confirm to you from Psalms 104, and if you have the Bible as your authority, then you will know that God is our divine providence. If there is life on other planets, then God is the one who sustains life even there. So he is the divine providence, not only of Earth, but of the whole universe. And so why am I telling you all this? Because you see, God works his divine providence all for your good. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 8 that when he made all creation, he crowned us humans uh, and he, he 
uh, uh, David asks, who is man that you're so mindful of him? And then also in Romans, Paul says that you work all things together. God, God in his providence work, works all things together for those who love him and for those who are called to his purpose. So his providence is actually aimed at you. His providence is aimed at his most special possession, his most special creation, which is you. And so it is for your benefit, but to his glory. So his providence not only sustains life, but it gives you everything that you need, even for life and for godliness. And so today I'm giving you a charge. Renew your trust in God if it has faltered. But this is also a charge even for us to renew it on a higher level, to, to, to recognize the fact that God is above all things. So renew your trust in God today and praise him and elevate him as your divine providence. And I mean, life gets easier when you realize that. Life gets easier when you give it up to God. And Solomon said, because um, we're young people, as, as, as we read the word, we're young people. Solomon says in Ecclesiastes chapter uh, 12, verse 1, remember your creator in the days of your youth. So if you and I, in our youth, will remember our creator in this kind of days, and he goes on to say, your, your, your days of trouble will seem no, they, they won't be so big of a deal. And so I'm charging you today to renew your trust in God and to remember your creator who is a divine providence in Jesus' name. Have a good week and be blessed.